Football is live. Welcome, everybody, to episode 47 of Football is Life. We are back in the studio today. Back in the studio. Tremont Street in the building. Let's go. Yes. Not not Nat. He's in he's still in Los Angeles. And he'll be there for a couple months. How's he's it here in our hearts yeah. and on Zoom? And on yeah, and in a computer. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of feet away from it. <laughs> uh I'm Ethan, of course, uh joined with my uh Evie nominated co hosts, uh Matthew Powell. Hello, hello. And Nat Mamudis. Hello, everyone. So glad to be here. Let's get into it, guys. Let's let's go over some transfers. Uh, or there's some transfers, some transfer rumors. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's very, I am very, very sad. Uh, longtime listeners of the show will know that I love Wu Bruin, and now he is in Austin Green. Uh, which makes me especially sad that I can't play the sad horn sound because I don't have the soundboard there. But uh, Will Bruin, uh, an MOS legend, is no longer a Sounders player. Do you guys have any thoughts on Will Bruin going to Austin? What do you think the better green is? Ooh, that's a good question. Oh, that's not even. That's just so easy. It's obviously Sounders Green. This I is feel not, like we could probably this spend an episode. Something, on this topic. something tells me you're biased. I don't know what it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think, I think first of all, Austin's is better, and I don't think Will Bruin moving is uh, too big of a deal. Um, I think he's like a. I don't think he was a huge part of Seattle's success this season, or nor would he be part of their success next season and I don't even know how much he'll see the field in um in Austin. Yeah. Well it's interesting also Jossie Zardes has arrived in Austin because of free agency. So now they have Arudi Bruin and they have Jossie Zardes all as like veteran MOS players. We'll see how the rotation works for the three of them. Where where do you guys see Austin finishing this year? Like if you had to guess, do you think they're going to finish in second place again, uh, in the in the Western Conference? Well, I guess the question is if their style of play is sustainable, and I actually think they got relatively lucky last year with mm. um, injuries, given the amount of like pressing they do and the amount of running they do, and the physicality with their men up top play and and in the midfield. Um, I think barring injuries, their success is repeatable, but I don't know if they can repeat the season they had with the lack of injuries they had, given how much their best attacking players are sprinting after the ball and then going in for a hard challenge. Um, if they, if Austin has bad injury luck compared to last year and loses a couple more games, I would not be surprised. Yeah, I, I, I just honestly, yeah. I, I Nashville will probably finish. Uh, sorry, not Nashville. Austin will probably finish top five. I, I don't see them dropping that hard. Um but uh they I think like Matt said, they got a little lucky last year and I don't think they'll get as lucky again, but the West is strong. I also I don't know if Austin is built for cup play. I think their style might be a league play style, and I think cup play in the MLS Cup and trying to win it all. Uh, might be more challenging for them. And that might be an issue they run into for years and years to come um, under their current coaching staff and style. They might have all the um, MLS uh, supporter shield success in the world, you know, coming close to it, winning it, and they might not win MLS Cup ever. Wow. That's a, I, that's a, <laughs> that's a big prediction, I think. I mean, I it, it's just <laughs> – I, I think I've seen – I think we've seen it play out before with teams – unable to win it all in cups because they're they're designed to maximize points not maximize wins um i think i think we do see that true. with every sport i think it does take mo it like having confidence in the playoffs in like that mentality like that that is not just soccer um you see newer teams to the in like the nfl playoffs it's the same thing the newer teams 
you uh, the will usually struggle in the playoffs compared to like a team that has a veteran quarterback who's been there a million times. That's why Tom Brady was so good. Ooh, uh, Tom Brady retired. Yeah, so we don't need to talk about him ever again. <laughs> According to his, I mean, on his Instagram though, he's retired, but he's still working. <laughs> see, you see those Breaking those abs of his. Those, Appar- apparently, <laughs> he uh, he officially filed the paperwork. That means he like can't come back or something. I don't know what that means, but I saw that report. Mm. Well, yeah. he's going to be starting the the accepting the Fox Sports money, which he will actually make more money than he made playing football. Right. With this new contract, which is just wild. But anyway, let's move on from from Tom Brady. Um, <laughs> I, I just wanted to say, like, one other thing about Will Bruin. Like, anyone who was giving him crap for, like, not producing. And, like, he did exactly and, and more for us of what was asked of him. He came, like, he came in 2017, that first year, huge. Um, in, in the 2020 season, he scored the first goal against Minnesota when we made a miraculous comeback in the Western Conference final. Um, And then I also, like, I feel like the reason I love him so much, he sort of helped me fall in love with the game of soccer. I have watched the package of... the, The first, like, MLS season I ever watched was the 2012 season. And I would just watch, like, all playoff goals highlights. Um, mm. I've watched the of from the 2012 MOSCs. I've watched that video many times. And Will Bruin scores. He scored like five goals in that in the 2012 MOS playoffs. And I just like loved watching him play then as a Dynamo player. Um, so I'm mm. very sad to see him leave. But hopefully he uh, he still scores some goals uh, this season. Hopefully uh, against uh, Nashville. No, what, what, that what, come from? I don't even understand. <laughs> Isn't Austin's in the West, Nashville's in the East? That's so random. <laughs> That's so. I was so targeted. Is that, is like, They're still going to play them. I, I think you guys are still playing Austin this year. I'm not sure. Is that about just a that, tone but... setter for our in studio oh, <laughs> for yeah. our in studio show? You just have to let everyone know where you stand on Nashville <laughs> after I came after um, Seattle's Green. It's a it's it's yep. friendly. It's a friendly rivalry, even though we don't really play each other that often. I will say they're both green. I don't think either one is really better. <laughs> but when but when Austin do their um like glow in the dark celebration, I think that's really cool. It is really cool. Oh, their that stadium is, is that really is cool. dope. That is actually really yeah. really dope. I wish I wish uh, the Sounders did that. It wouldn't look as good in our green as it does for them but that is actually really cool i want to go there just to experience that light except if i go there then i wouldn't want to see them because they'd probably be seeing playing the sounders and that would mean that they were beating us but i don't know maybe we can beat them like five to one or something also something kind of randomly interesting about austin um nycfc and austin have never played each other been a couple years that's, and they've never seen the same field. Do they play each other this that's season? That's wild. No, it's still not even this season. And I really, I don't know why. Um, maybe Claudio Reyna was like, he was like, no, nah, that's my ex, man. We can't play them. And he like, I mean, maybe he blackmailed MLS that he wouldn't have to pay NYCFC, but uh, probably not. He said, I will expose Greg Berhalter bringing US MNT to a, to a standstill if you matches against <laughs> NYCFC. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. And it's I I always kind of wanted to play them because they kind of they became like NYCFC 2 for a bit cuz I said they yeah. they got Claudio Reyna. With Claudio Reyna. Uh, then they got like Ben Sweat from us or I guess technically from Miami. Then you know we sold them our captain at the time Alex Ring. Uh their keepers Brad Stuver who was uh Johnson's second string for a couple of years. Um, and yeah, it was just they just felt like they kept signing all of our old players. Um, so I always kind of wanted to play them, but it never happened. Speaking of NYCFC, let's talk about some uh, potential signings. Uh, yes, for 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 New York, I think both Lionel of them are Messi interesting. coming to NYCFC. 
I saw that it was confirmed. No more Miami. <laughs> it, it is confirmed. Tom <laughs> Tom Brady confirmed it on Fox <laughs> Sports. Um, in his in his underwear. Yeah. Um, no, but um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Nat. Um. The, why, well, yeah. Why are we going back to Tom Brady? <laughs> no, I do feel like we might have an an episode named Tom Brady in his underwear. It's the Massachusetts oh, air, is- you know. It's hard not to. Okay. Yeah, we're just speaking to the viewers. Yeah. It's yep. still it's been a couple of years yep. since he left um but you know his his essence is still it's still in the air. There are about 5 oh, statues of him in the garden so it's like <laughs> it's hard to avoid him. Um Wow, that's is that it, wait there that's real? Like what are the Wait, what are they made out of? Just like bronze, uh, you, bronze and yeah. gold and silver. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I was just messing, but um <laughs> Yeah. There's no, yeah, there's no statue. I mean, honestly, there probably yeah. will be a statue somewhere in Massachusetts. At probably outside point. of Foxborough they'll, or Gillette, I mean. They'll make a version oh, yeah. of the Rocky statue in Philadelphia, but of oh, Tom yeah. Brady. Maybe Bill Belichick, too. Um, I don't know what you would make of. Does, does Brady have an iconic pose that you could make a statue of? Kissing his kid? And, oh, jeez. Is uh <laughs> would would Belichick's statue have a Too constant much. scowl? Well, it would be constant, but would it have a scowl? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yes, a scowl. he would definitely have to be in a bad mood. Still wearing his headset and the hoodie with the sleeves cut off. Mm-hmm. Up forty points. Very upset. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. Ethan, yes. do you want to say who? Who are the rumors for, yeah, sure. for NYCFC? Yeah, we've got two rumors going on for NYCFC. I think one probably a lot uh, more plausible than the other. Uh, but the first one that sort of broke out earlier this week uh, was Anthony Martial. Um, he's fallen a bit out of favor with Man United. I honestly, earlier this season, he was kind of playing, and I thought that he had finally found another place at Man United after all these years. Um, but I guess not, um, which is kind of a shame because I always really liked him. Uh, I remember like I watched his first goal for Man United live against Liverpool, and that was a really great, that was a really great moment. Um, I have a clear memory of uh, like my the, my main memory of Anthony Martial is in I think it was FIFA 17. Mm. Uh, him, Hazard, um. And not not Maradozo, um Marco Royce. Oh yeah. And um there was one oh, more person. Ha- it was James who was on... Rodriguez. Oh yes, it was James Rodriguez. And it was Anthony Martial was was yeah, also in yeah. there. With with Eden Hazard in his prime. Um and I just remember thinking at that point, like like why is uh, Anthony Martial in this group? Like I think, <laughs> like I feel like at that point, like he was, he was very young and like I mean, he was the most like, expensive people, like, teenager ever at the time. I mean, people knew who he was, but I feel like he's always been overrated. That being said, mm. like he has had, like he has had so much of his career at at United where he hasn't been playing. Yeah, and like I feel like a move to MOS or or a move away in anything would be good for him. Um I I think like him coming to MOS someday is very, very, very yeah. likely. Yeah. I saw that he was also rumored with Besiktas, which is probably more likely, I'd say, than NYCFC. Mm-hmm. Um but if NYCFC mm-hmm. wanted to go out there and like pay the money for a big DP, I wonder how I'd feel about that. Because I feel like uh that was kind of how we began our approach in the MLS, you know, signing David Villa and and Andrea Pirlo and Frank Lampard. Um, and we sort of... we No, we don't know if that was legal. If that might have been legally. illegal, yes. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll touch on that later. Um, and, um, so, yeah, and, but we've kind of strayed away from that approach. And we've really, you know, we've been scouting younger players, uh, using a lot of homegrown players. And so I, I kind of don't know how I'd feel if we went and got, you know, like a 10 million... DP because um, it just feels sort of against our philosophy at this moment. And while I am a big fan of Martial, I'm, I'm kind of worried that he wouldn't. I get the vibe that he wouldn't really care about being in MLS. Um, and that maybe it would be just like a stepping stone for him um, because he's still like he's still decently young. Like he he's not old yet. 
So I, I don't think he would treat it as a stepping stone because if he comes to MLS, like I don't know where he's thinking he's going after. Like maybe he would <laughs> go play in South America later. Or I, like I I don't see. I don't like I don't see his when when you come to MLS if he comes to MLS I don't think he would be expecting to be playing at like another top club but uh, who who is the other rumor to NYCFC yeah the other rumor is uh, Richie Ledesma American player um, currently at PSV uh, I believe that this signing would be a loan I don't think I don't think we would straight up uh, acquire him. I think it's a loan, um, and I think this could be interesting. I honestly don't know that all that much about him. Um, I know he was in the MLS. Um, uh, also, I that he's sort of a, an attacking midfielder, um, which also this would be interesting. I wonder actually if we are signing him um, because. Um, there have been reports recently um, that NYCFC and Santiago Rodriguez uh, have actually uh, met an agreement on a deal for Santi to come uh, and play here for a while. Um, and I think that's pretty plausible, to be honest. There was an interview with Santi where um, he wasn't like... He, he, he was talking about um, NYCFC and as well as uh, Montevideo Torque, which is where he was on loan from for NYCFC, as well as how he, he rejected an offer to go to Bahia, um, the other city football group team. Um, and um, and he, he sounded like he didn't really want to be at either Torque or Bahia, but, and that things were just kind of messy with NYCFC. At Jiffy Lube, it's our job to make car care make sense. That's why we offer personalized service reviews that swap car talk for straight talk so you know what your car is telling you and what to do about it. Putting you in the driver's seat of car care, that's a job for Jiffy. To find a Pennzoil Pouring Service Center near you, visit JiffyLube.com. With Jiffy Lube MultiCare, it's our job to keep you moving with a full range of services from Pennzoil oil changes to tires, brakes, batteries, and more. We've got what your car needs so you're ready for what's next. Putting you in the driver's seat of car care, that's a job for Jiffy. Visit JiffyLube.com to find a service center near you. Diamonds, silver, and gold? Oh my! Find your love language at JCPenney's Valentine's Day Jewelry Sale. Enjoy dazzling deals with your JCPenney credit card and coupon, like up to 70% off jewelry and up to 60% off modern bride rings. Plus, say yes please to $25 diamonds and gemstones while they last. Happy Valentine's Day. JCPenney offers valid on select styles through 220, subject to credit approval. Yes please jewelry excluded from coupons. Other exclusions apply. See store or jcp.com for details. If you're looking for heavy-duty storage solutions, look no further than the Home Depot because we take the term heavy-duty very literally. Like our Husky 5-tier heavy-duty garage shelving unit. Each shelf has a weight capacity of 1,000 pounds when evenly distributed. That's a total of 2.5 tons of durable, no-nonsense, load-me-up-with-everything-you-got storage. Right now, save up to 25% on select heavy-duty storage solutions. Store more, save more. Shop in-store and online at the Home Depot. How doers get more done. Um, but I think he could come back, and I think that that would be great for us, because um, you know he's been with the team, and he's and he's also been great with the team. Um, but I'll take I'll take all the signings. Give me Ledesma, give me Martial. You know, what whatever. I mean, it'll be fun. If, you know, right? does does United sell to Citigroup? That's a good point. I, I actually I wonder. I don't know about that. I think they would. I think I think I probably. think they I think they would. It would be funny oh, though, he, if yeah. Martial did really well here and then was loaned to like Girona and then did really well there and then was loaned to City and then <laughs> yeah. That I feel like he might not want to do. Like even if like they tried to do that, I feel like he could say something. Maybe like a FIFA situation where like if you're Barcelona and you try to sign uh, it used to be if you would try to sign Ronaldo like Ronaldo would send you an email in the game saying like no I can't go there the fans would never respect me well at that point it would be championship side Manchester City 
not Ooh. Premier League side Manchester. Should we, should we talk about that? Yeah, we could. Yeah, let's move on. Let's that? move on to that since that is pretty much the story yeah. of the week right now in in the world of football. Uh, what so Manchester's if for those who haven't uh, heard, Manchester City is currently being investigated for. Uh, going back all the way to the 2009-2010 Premier League season uh, for uh, misreporting payments to the coach and for, for players um, just uh, breaking the financial fair play rule which are very complicated I don't really understand any of them but clearly the neither do, uh, do Man City but, uh, it's, <laughs> exactly yeah. po- possible punishments could be Man City get expelled from the Premier League. They get relegated. They get a points deduction. Um, they could get a transfer ban. And this also involves NYCFC because uh, the uh, Frank Lampard, David Villa, and Andrea Pirlo deals, uh, some of them are involved in this. Ethan, when was the last time one of those players played for uh, NYCFC? Was... Did Andrew, Should, did Andrea Pirlo um, did he play in 2018 in the in I, that season? I don't think I he did. I think David Villa did. I think that was David Villa's last oh, season. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm a little uh, I'm a little thought, murky on the I, details because I feel like I, I remember Pirlo him leaving played in for longer than than Villa. Uh, but no, what yeah, are Villa your, was what, the, he stayed the longest. Yeah. Cause he's the only mm-hmm. one who could play, <laughs> really. <laughs> like what Lampard guys... was decent. He's, he was injured yeah. a lot, but he scored 12 goals for us. He scored NYCFC's first ever hat trick. Um, he scored. But like, he scored what should have been the goal of the year against Philadelphia. With the from from midfield, oh, David Villa. one of the best calls. Yeah. Yeah, I when don't that know how that didn't win goal of the year. I the league that was league disrespecting it lost to us, Atlanta. Man, but, um. Yeah. It was. Uh, yeah. Of course. It was Atlanta. That was Atlanta's fans taking over. But what do you guys think is going to happen to Manchester City? Like, what do you think the punishment should be? What do you think will happen? Do you think they will get punished at all? Do you think NYCFC will get punished at all? I think it's. I. I don't see NYCFC getting punished. Um. I think. It's very likely that Man City sees more than a slap on the wrist because um, this is the second time they're coming under criticism, yeah. and last time they appealed it, and this time they've already said the Premier League or the entity representing the Premier League has already said that um, they will not be allowed to appeal it. Mm. So it sounds like they are learning from last time and they're going to actually punish them. I don't think they'll get kicked out of the Premier League. It'll probably be a fine, a transfer ban, and a points deduction. And I think Manchester City fans will feel that it's heavy considering the alleged charges are from 2018. Mm. But um, I, I well, they're even farther than that. Well, 2010 to I've, 2018. The the latest yeah. charge is 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, okay. Wow. So it, it'll it's like five years ago, and it's it's like what does this team have to do with that? But the team you have now was built on the foundation of that financial uh, not fair play. What I find interesting is there's this quote from uh, Pep Guardiola that I'm I'm I see I I have to paraphrase it. I don't remember the full quote, uh, but he was essentially saying like if this team ever does me wrong or does anything wrong. Uh, you know, illegally with the money or anything like that, like they lose my trust and I'm gone and I'm and I'm and I'm leaving this team. So I do wonder. I also I saw a clip recently from an interview or a press conference. He is he is extremely confident that they are innocent and that they won't be charged or anything. But I wonder if this could be the end of Pep Guardiola's tenure at Man City. I mean, you look at their statement, their statement, they're, they're, they are extremely, uh, um, they extremely believe that they are innocent and that they've done nothing wrong. And they put, I feel like they put out like a very harsh Mm. statement, um, to, to the league, but I, and, uh, 
before when they were investigated, it was different. It was for UA. It was UEFA. Um, it wasn't right. the Premier League. I feel like the fact that the Premier League uh, didn't has like waited so long for this, and it goes back. I feel like they have to have something. So right. I feel like there has to be some sort of punishment. Um, this is this whole story is wild. I feel like it. What's what's wild to me is that it could get as big as like, as like um, the whole that it, that were when everything with uh, Lance Armstrong went down and and they had to take away uh, championships. Um, uh, mm. And they ended up giving um, the the uh, first place awards to like people had, who had came in like fifteenth or something, or people <laughs> who hadn't been in, um, who uh, had not uh, been on Lance Armstrong's team. And right. like that being said, like if they like the, the, another thing that they could do is like they could take take away um, their titles. And which would just be wild, like, um, yeah, because winning it, like, this is not how a team wants to win a title. Um, Tottenham's first would, trophy. <laughs> we would not. I don't, get, yeah, I don't even think they would get, get one. Yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't get one. We didn't finish in second. The only times we finished in second were in that time was to like Chelsea and Leicester, and actually, I guess the Leicester season. Um, Leicester City, when they won, we actually finished in third. Arsenal came in second somehow that year. Um, after what we, a we dropped season that after was. After that. That was an amazing yeah, what a, time. One of the greatest seasons of, of soccer. Uh, that was that was amazing. Uh, but I feel, but like, it would, if they do give the trophies to Liverpool and United, like that would affect uh, history and that would affect affect records as both of those clubs would be adding to their collection but I feel like it wouldn't actually mean anything yeah. to the players even though the players yeah. would get like mailed the medal probably which is just and like with all that being said I feel like I expect a transfer ban of maybe like one to two years or something I could see it being long um, but yeah I really don't know I'd be shocked though if they actually get relegated um cuz like I don't see why they would lose so much money and like I don't see yeah. that just doesn't feel like enough of a punishment would they get uh, a a Juventus style points deduction maybe I I could maybe see that happening that would make the uh yeah. that would leave the Premier League title race to uh Manchester United and Arsenal yeah, although I feel like it's yeah. Arsenal's anyway, to be honest. It's all yes, it already yeah. is Arsenal's to lose. Arsenal lost this, that this game, year. and it seemed like maybe it would open up, but then Man City went and lost as well. So, um, yeah. Is there is there anything that we think could happen to NYCFC, or do you think it's like very much completely separate? Nothing will happen to them at all. Maybe we'll get a transfer ban. I feel like that's probably the the most that would happen. I I don't know. I what what could they do to us? It'd be like, you know, it's like your your older brother, um, like your older brother gets in jail, yeah. so you get a timeout. I don't know, like something like that. Um, relegation. Well, I think it. <laughs> I, I think it's more. I think it's more than that, because uh, yeah, let's let's relegate uh, NYCFC <laughs> to the championship. <laughs> Um, I, I think oh it's my more god, than that like would you're... suck! <laughs> if 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 they were like, well, we can't yeah. relegate them, so why don't we just put them in the championship? <laughs> that would be so bad. We, yeah. We'd probably get humiliated. But the USL Championship already has too many teams, so we're gonna send them all the way down to USL League Two, <laughs> play against the college kids. Honestly, you know what? If if NYCFC get relegated, but it opens the door for promotion relegation in in MLS. Might be, be might worth be it. worth it. It might be worth it. <laughs> wow, well, I, I think um if if they do, like if they, I, I feel like the example that you give it it's it would have to be a little more than that because they did they were involved. Like it wasn't like the NYCFC did nothing. Like if they actually were like breaking breaking the 
uh, the rules uh, to bring these big money players to MOS. Like that is actually doing something. Yeah. Uh, also, that being though, said, like if you guys have a transfer ban, like it doesn't seem like it would it would really <laughs> affect you guys. Yeah, maybe not. Um, as we've seen from um, literally maybe, maybe no one would, coming in. Maybe it would stop the bleeding of losing players. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I, usually, usually it does uh, also prohibit players from leaving. Sometimes I gotta say though, whenever something like this happens for a team. I feel like I'm always left thinking like other teams got to be doing this too. And I think if you look at Chelsea's recent transfer window, there's no way they're not breaking oh, some yeah. rules. Like they surely they're breaking some rules yeah. signing all those players for was, $130 million. Was they Chelsea's should be, should be final final bill for the past year or past two transfer windows I think was like 622 million. Yeah, it was something crazy like that. More than some teams have spent um, like it in was, the last five years, it was more than um, it was more than Siri Oz total spending. Right, <laughs> right. Do That's you crazy. think these rules should exist? Like, yeah. should yes. they exist? Like, yeah. should should they have a salary cap? Unequivocally, oh, I yes. don't know about salary cap. Oh, but... wait, yeah, well, what, like MLS the, style like, or or like like cuz the Premier League doesn't have a salary cap but if they did have a do you think they should have a salary cap because i feel like the reason the financial fair play rules are in here for for my understanding the reason they're in it is to stop one team from making like a super club and like signing the best players like there is more to soccer than just having like really good players we saw this we saw this with Manchester United at the uh for a lot of last year, a lot of really high, uh, high, high-paid players, and they were failing. I think that was super funny. I think it's super, <laughs> super funny when a team that spends lots of money then still loses, and that ha- and that still is going to happen. And that's one thing that's great about soccer. Anyone can beat anyone on any given day. So, like to me. I say we should just get rid of the rule. I know there's so much money. I don't think the game will get ruined if because like there's still like integrity. There's still like teams still are going to um follow unwritten rules of like stuff you do based on the world of soccer. Like I don't think it would be the end of the world. True. I don't think they should get rid of the rules. I think there's people out there with a lot of money. And I think that these people out there with a lot of money would make these teams their, like, playthings to oh, yeah. grow and not be genuinely interested in the culture or anything. Like whenever anybody buys a team here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I completely agree. We should definitely have these rules. Um, yeah, that's. I mean, that's all I have to say about it. These rules are important. People break them anyway, but, you know, then they get punished for it, hopefully. All right, let's move on to uh, some other Premier League news, um, and which also sort of relates to the U.S. men's national team, as Jesse Marsh was fired from mm. Leeds uh, after their game on the weekend, and they have already had um, another game. Uh, they played Manchester United um, in the new. Uh, uh, it is the Chris Armas reign. The former uh, Red Bull and oh Toronto FC coach. He's in charge of Leeds now. What Somehow. an awful coach! I'm. I. I. I don't want. I won't go on a, a long rant. Um, and I already kind of texted this to you guys. Yeah, but Chris Armas, and this is gonna sound like I like Red Bulls. I'm thankful for what Chris Armas did to the Red Bulls. He took Toronto Wait, and he Ethan, took the Red Bulls. He, Ethan likes the Red Bulls. That's not. Oh, this is like a Scooby Doo <laughs> thing. I don't. Know, don't. I know. I know. You're gonna make it seem like I think Kuzville sucks. No, um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> no. What Chris Chris Armas took Toronto and he drove them into the ground, and then or or I guess it was the other way around, right? He took the Red Bulls and he drove them into the ground, and then he took Toronto and he drove them into the ground, and then he was fired because he's not a good coach and he drives teams into the ground. And then you know, flash forward to last year, he's an assistant coach for Ralph Ragnick uh, at Manchester United. 
and they're playing like like dog doo doo. You know, they're not playing well. Um, and I wonder why they're playing better this year. Probably because they got rid of Chris Armas. Leeds were doing pretty decently last year. Why are they doing bad now? Maybe it's because Chris Armas is on their coaching staff. You know, and it's the most perplexing thing to me about uh, this uh, sacking of Jesse Marsh is why do you give why do you give him the transfer window? Why do you give him the January transfer window? He signs an American player, and then a day after that player's first game, Jesse Marsh is gone. Which probably means that uh, it probably means Weston McKenney's going to be gone the, as fast I, as he can. It I makes mean, no sense I, to I, me. I don't see Weston McKinney going anywhere. I think that the move for him was a little bit beneath with, uh, McKinney. Like again, like he should play every game. Um, there's also you got to remember also the Leeds United uh, owners are American. Um, as well, and like I do think Weston McKinney was a good signing for them. He has looked, I thought he looked good in the United game. In his he first looked start. fine. He looked fine. Um, <laughs> I thought he looked better. He looked better in that game than in the the than in the first game. Yeah, he's certainly. still just uh, he's, adjusting I, to the the pace of the Premier League. It is a very different style than uh, Serie A. He hasn't transitioned one to one at all, but he's he'll figure it out. I'm sure he's got the quality. Um. Yeah, I am worried about Brendan Aronson's minutes now that Jesse Marsh is gone. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's definitely the the biggest worry at Leeds, um, because Tyler Adam, Tyler Adams, and Weston McKinney, they should continue to to get uh, uh starts. Um, and like it's interesting about Weston McKinney because um that you think he might leave because like he has the contract where like if he plays in ten games. Then like it becomes a then he becomes uh, a Leeds player. Like right now he's still really? technically on loan, uh, but if he plays in ten, and they then, don't get relegated, uh, then it's final. Right. <laughs> well, it's like built into the Is contract. That, yeah. Um, yeah. I would probably also put that into my contract to be honest. Um, so if they get relegated, yeah. he goes back to Juventus. Oh, that's decent. Although they might get relegated but, but, too. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, like, if he goes back to Juventus, like, he should go to another club. Like, for his career, like, uh, I feel like he has his uh, – the shelf life at uh, Juventus has ended. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion. I've always liked how open he is about how coffee makes him poop. Okay. Um, <laughs> what? I think – Wait, <laughs> the... what? He's always <laughs> – I this interview is funny. This is a really funny interview. If if you haven't seen I, it, yeah, there was like there's a clip not. of him and and Chiellini back at Juventus, and they're talking about I think pizza and stuff. And Chiellini's like, "Oh my God, you do that with the pizza? That's ridiculous." It's and, ranch on pizza. Yeah. Well, to be honest, I don't I don't know if I vibe with that. I, I like ranch on pizza. I don't think I enjoy ranch. I I'm not a big condiment person in general. Um, especially the thick is white it? creamy ones. And I know, and I know what that sounds like, but I, I genuinely like like mayonnaise. Well, this and, conversation and, is going <laughs> is, is nowhere is near the we, soccer is, is show is that how, we started. That's the title of the yeah, episode: bitch. "The Thick White." Yeah, I, we, okay, okay. <laughs> we had another. We had another episode that was called "Someone Ate Poop." Was it actually because of this? Story no, that was because was of no, 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 no. That, Yeah, that was that was an reasons. Eagles fan. Um, oh yes, that's true. Yeah, and then that's and then true. and then I think Keelini brings up coffee or espresso or something, and McKenney's like, "Oh, that makes me that makes me poop." I think was he late to a training? Yeah, just yeah. recently at yeah. Leeds, he was late, and he was like, he was like, "I just had an espresso, so that's why I'm late." <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my! I find it, I All find right. it really funny. So with Jesse Mars getting fired, uh, which. Still, yeah, a, a little out of the blue. Um, but the U.S. need a coach. He was someone who, for a while, people have been ta- have been saying that Jesse Marsh should be the coach of the United States Men's National Team. But there's no reason he would give up a job uh, in the Premier League. Well, now he doesn't have that job. So, mm-hmm. so do you guys think he should become the coach of the national team? No. Or should you go somewhere else? Yeah. Uh, no. I I've been on it for a while. I think I don't think his style is built for international soccer. 
Mm. Um, I think he honestly struggled with a team that uh, was better than where he had them in the Premier League. I think, I think if it's him or a couple of the other options I'd seen, I would take Jesse Marsh. But I do think the U.S. men's national team can aim higher, especially when they're going to be hosting a World Cup, and their last World Cup squad was the youngest in the tournament by far. I think I think the goal has to be higher than Jesse Marsh. But but next to some of the other names I've seen, it's it's I don't I wouldn't be horribly upset about the hire. I would just be a little disappointed. I guess. Yeah. I I, I would prefer I, him over I, any yeah. like MLS name personally. I yes. I would prefer him over Jim Curtin. Um, or any other guy in the MLS. Um, yeah. Well, like, I think it's weird that Jim Curtin gets talked about so, so much. And, like, I think this is one of my main problems with Greg Berhalter also getting talked about so much. Is like, the MLS media loves Curtin and Berhalter. And, well, yeah. not Berhalter anymore. But when Berhalter got hired, they loved him. And same thing. Had... Had Berhalter won a trophy uh, with the with the crew? Nope. Uh, he had made it to the MLS <laughs> final in 2015, which they lost. Um, has Curtin won a trophy with Philadelphia? I guess he won one. the conference. Uh, he yeah he won the um. Okay, and he won the supporter shield, but he has not won an U.S. Open Cup, uh, which he's made so many countless finals. He has not won the MLS Cup. They have not had success because that they also have not had success in the Concacaf Champions League. Um, we want a team that uh, we want. I want to. I want a winner uh, to coach the U.S. team. Uh, the we all so before the show we all picked three people who we thought uh, three potential picks. Uh, I say I, I think we should go around and share them. Matt, who did you pick? Who who are your top three, or two or three people, over Jesse Marsh? Who you would like to see coach the national team? Uh oh, who I would like to see? These are more realistic options, yeah. but but I can I I don't hate any of How, them. However you however you thought of the question, okay, just give um, us the picks. So I really like and and this is funny because of the conversation we just had, but I like Jim Curtin. Oh. I I think his style I think I think the fact that he runs a team that wins a lot of games, scores a lot of goals and doesn't concede a lot of goals and the team doesn't have stars and it's defensively sound, there's a lot of things about his style to like and I think he'd be a big upgrade over Burhalter and I think he's very attainable as the USMNT coach. So as far as what? realistic I mean, options Yeah. I I yeah, I he, think I think yeah. there's a lot to like there. Um and then, I mean, he said he would be a U.S. men's national team assistant coach. Yeah, he wouldn't he, even. He's, yeah, like, he's he desperate. Would, he would for this job. He would quit his job to be the assistant coach, which is just wild. Like, I, I would not that's, do that. That's stand behavior saying. right there. Well, maybe yeah. we need a stand. No, that's not true. <laughs> we need Jose Mourinho. <laughs> oh yeah. No. <laughs> So no. we have a stand, and we have somebody who will come in and hate every <laughs> single player and hate every single person on the staff, yeah. and he will win a lot of games. And no, I, he won't. I really like Jose Mourinho. <laughs> <laughs> Nat, Nat's players, been burned personally. <laughs> he is not the what the U.S. team needs. Again, he plays defensive. Our defense is not the problem. We need someone who's going to help us score goals. That's not what he does. He would be so toxic. Everyone would hate him. The media, it would, um, he is not at all the person who I think we it should would, bring in. It would be the most entertaining era of US MNT soccer. And I have no question about that. I would probably that. agree. I have no, there's no doubt in my mind that it would be the most entertaining uh, but I don't think we're guaranteed <laughs> results if we do that. I would like the most entertaining. I think there are more entertaining coaches. There um, are not who... more entertaining coaches. No, he's, <laughs> he's honestly he's probably the most entertaining one. To be honest, like if if you, I'm just so over him. I'm just so over him. I did like I'm. I don't get entertained by him anymore. Did, did you have a third, Matt? Yeah, um, a third person. Sort of like a general. Um, category is is this one 
And this is what I think we should actually aim for because I think it's possible and I think it would elevate us. Um, some of these Premier League coaches that are on the way out, uh, the name we talked about is Jesse Marsh, but I'm also thinking about um, Thomas Tuchel, Graham Potter. Um, I'm thinking about the uh, – oh, Jurgen Klopp potentially. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking- I don't think we can get Jurgen Klopp. I think there's just no way. I, he is he would want this he's losing a lot of games with a good team. He might be <laughs> on his way out of Liverpool. And yeah. I don't think it's I, – I don't know what's causing their loss, but it can't all be him because he's won a lot of games at a lot of places. Yeah. I think it's probably just his time at Liverpool. I mm-hmm. think I think it might be the end of the Klopp era. I, I think we got to – when, when these era. coaches – when these top-tier coaches get fired from the Premier League, you, we have to take a look at every single one of them. And I think – Graham Potter, Thomas Tuchel, um, maybe Jesse Marsh, and um, uh, yeah. uh, Jurgen Klopp, and then the name that we mentioned earlier, Pep Guardiola. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You gotta, what? you gotta contact him, even if it seems desperate. You gotta, yeah. yeah. If he gets fired or moves on from Manchester City, you gotta make the call. Yeah, poke him on Facebook yeah. or something. Yeah. You know, it's gotta get the word out there. Do you think it's more? Who do you think is more realistic to, uh, as a coach, Jurgen Klopp or that Jurgen Klinsmann comes back? <laughs> Honestly, maybe Jurgen Klopp. Yep. I think Jurgen really? Klinsmann's probably you done. Think it, it, there's no chance Klinsmann comes back because I feel like I Klinsmann has unfinished business. Uh, he got he got fired way too soon. Um, I agree with that, the, but I I, just, I don't I don't I think him coming back would be like. I don't know. It'd be like it'd be like getting back with an old ex that like there's there there wasn't necessarily closure, but it's also been long enough that it's just awkward. You know what I mean? Like I just feel like it would be weird. And it, yeah, is he part of your three? Mm-hmm. So he is one of the people who I who I did list as a potential coach. Oh. Um, the other people who I who I wanted to bring up uh, were uh, for. For MLS coaches, I have to throw my man Smetzer in there. He is an MLS coach with a lot of history, a lot of championships. Um, and if Curtin is in the conversation um, and other MLS coaches like uh, Tarandolo, um and uh, Peter Vermes, like you have to throw in Smetzer into there. Um, I think he would be a great coach. Um, he's just so fun to root for. Um, I also have to throw in Pochettino. Um, I think Pochettino um, is a would be a really uh, good coach. Um, he has a great system. It seems like players love playing for him. Um, two honorable mentions. Uh, I I put Josh Wolf on here. So back to Austin. Um, oh. I think he's a really exciting coach. I think he he's a he's a good coach. Um, and it took a year for him to like implement his style, but I think he would be fun. Um, and another person I was thinking um, was uh, Thierry Henry. Um, oh. I think this one is is pretty is that's a very long shot. Um, but I mean, a long time player in MOS uh, coached the Impact uh, before going back to um, be an assistant coach um, and and be with Belgium. Um, I think like I feel like he is someone who would be, who could be like. Famous player who
And See you always, next Saturday. Always, always remember, new time, Saturday at 11. Uh, <laughs> 11 a.m. Eastern. Okay, yeah. Oh, I wonder how this is going to go on. And soon. with that. Yeah. Football, Football is, is live. live. Thank you, everybody.